Hello, and welcome to my channel. I'm Eyes Good, and this channel is all about a 2D survival game that I am developing called The Struggle to Survive, set in 1700s America. I wanted to show you some things today regarding the use of Godot's tile map system and how I have implemented my game world and the view and the tile maps. Right now I'm generating a new world taking a little longer than in my previous videos because I'm testing performance today specifically with the size of the the game world. Now my goal with the tile maps was first of all I didn't want any tile map chunking at all. So I don't want to use the chunking features of the tile map. When I worked on this game in Unity, I ended up having to load nine chunks of data around the player. And I didn't want to do that with Godot. I wanted to see if I could work with the tile map without creating chunks, but at the same time being able to have a very, very large world. So no tile map chunking was a goal. Another goal was a wrapping seamless world. I don't want the player to reach the edge of the map. And, of course, I was able to do that using, using an, uh, Godot and using a seamless texture as my noise for my map. That turned out very well. And third, I wanted to be able to create very large maps, huge maps, um, into the millions of tiles. Number four, I wanted it to be performant. As the player's walking around, I, I want... I want the uh, you know jitter to be at a minimum. I want minimum frame rate loss while moving. You know I just want it to be very performant. Now I was able to accomplish these things by um, coming up with a methodology where I would refresh the player view every time the player moves one tile. Now I want to. I want to show you a little bit of the performance with this. Uh, this mini-map is a mini-map of a game world that was just generated that is 2.2 million tiles in size. Now, we're not storing 2.2 million tiles or 2,250,000 tiles, and that's not to mention that the trees, all the green little green dots are trees. Uh, we're not storing all of that as you know tree objects in the scene tree. We're actually storing everything in, in a dictionary and um, what we're actually putting on the tile map itself, the view, which is a, in this particular example is the view size is 50 by 34 tiles or 1700 tiles. And I want to show you, um, let me zoom out in the map, just so that you can, you can see the edge of the view. So this is 1,700 tiles. And as I move, what happens is it refreshes this view when the player reaches the next tile position. Nothing is refreshed until the player reaches the destination, which is, um, in this case, these are 64 by 64 tiles. Uh, and when the player reaches the new tile position, there is a refresh of the view. Now, this is extremely performant. I am really happy. I'm only, I'm only losing a couple of frames in the movement, which I'm very, very happy with. And by doing it this way, rather than setting up the entire tile map with the entire game world loaded onto the tile maps. By doing it this way, uh, I, I get the performance that I want. The maps can be as large as they need to be because I'm actually not storing the tile map data in the tile map. I'm storing it in dictionaries that are then read every time the player moves. The view is calculated based on the player's position, the surrounding surrounding tiles are 
picked up out of the dictionaries and then the view is painted you know for each each step so the player is actually moving but and the camera is attached to the player so the camera is following the player and when the player reaches the next tile the player's position is reset back to the center of the screen and this is if you think about um, the player moving from one tile to the next tile by the time the player reaches the next tile there's a refresh of the view the view then is centered back on the player with the correct tiles loaded and the player's position gets reset back to zero you know this or excuse me the center of the screen and the process repeats and it's just one one big cycle now the the uh, map I want to show you this is this is the noise that's generated and you can see here it's 1500 by 1500 or 2,250,000 that's the noise that's generated and the mini map that we have in the game is here and so you can see how oh we have a lot of trees up north here and as I zoom in you can begin to see each pixel represents a tile in the tile map data that is stored in dictionaries. So I think storing the data in dictionaries and loading the view is a much better solution than trying to use the built-in chunk engine, which don't, you know, I'm sure it's fine for small games, but for something along the lines of millions of tiles which is what I'm going for you know I want I want something that's performant and I really I really think that this is phenomenal to be able to the engine to be able to handle the refreshing of 1700 tiles every every player move and to be able to produce maps of this size and of course you know this is all going to be dependent on uh, memory how much memory this this machine has quite a bit of memory so I'm and I'm not running into any issues and I'm sure that when the game releases I'll probably end up having just to make it avail uh, to, to make it as as uh, widely compatible as possible I'll probably have to bring the uh, the map size down a little bit um, but even you know 500 by 500 is you know a very very large map and very sufficient for the game that I'm making. Well, I think that's all I have for you today. I just wanted to share some performance visuals with you. I'm very happy with Godot. Um, it's much easier to work with than Unity, and while Unity has a great a great product, Godot is, uh, in my opinion, superior, and and I I love working in this engine. So I'm three months in, and almost four months now, and just tickled with what I'm able to accomplish in this game engine. Well, if you found the video informative, helpful, um, please subscribe. Uh, hit the like button if you like this video, and I will see you next time.